G'day folks, Damon from Nomad. I just want to talk you through some of the tips and techniques that we've found for the slipstream flying fish, uh, particularly around trolling and what are you know some of the, the things that we've found work really well. So probably the first one is trolling speed. Um, obviously your boat and the conditions you're fishing in are going to dictate a lot of you know what happens with the speed that you troll these lures at. Um, they can be trolled quite fast depending on conditions. You know, in really calm weather, you know, we've trolled the larger 280 size up to 10 knots, no problems. Uh, we've obviously found the smaller one, um, you know, it, it goes better at probably slower speeds if it's rough. But again, we've trolled this in a shotgun position, uh, eight or nine knots and, you know, been very successful with it. So it really depends on the conditions and, you know, your boat's wash uh, as to the best way to you know to really make it work for you so you've really got to play around with some of the rigging options um, some of the positions of the the tow points and just find what works for you so keep that in mind when you're out there move it around and just see what looks good so it's important that you choose the right leader for the size of the flying fish now we've made these so that the holes that go through the body can handle appropriate size leader. So for the 140, for example, you really should, and it depends again on the brand of leader, but typically you'll get somewhere around 180 to 200 pound fluorocarbon uh, through the 140. The 200, you should get uh, around that sort of 350, 400 pound uh, leader going through the body. And on the larger 280, We've made this so that you should be able to get, you know, super heavy duty, 600 pound, you know, ultra hard leader uh, through all of the holes through the body. So one of the other questions that you'll have is which hole to use at the front to rig the flying fish with. So you've got one option where there's a through hole, uh, a through body hole that comes out right at the top. You've got another option where there's a hole that comes through just on the underside of the chin. Now, what we've found is that the one on the underside of the chin has actually worked better in rough water conditions than the one at the top. So what we'd recommend is if you want to, you know, if you've got a really calm day, oily calm, and you want to get, you know, great action and you're trolling it from the rigger, you're towing it up a little bit and you really want it to kind of skip a bit, um, use the top toe point at the front. If it's a rougher day and, you know, it's jumping around a little bit, um, try the toe point at the bottom. But again, it depends on the conditions, it depends on where you're running it in the rigger. You know, if you've got it 150 yards back on your shotgun rigger, it's a whole different story to running it, you know, 20 yards back uh, out the back of the transom in the wash. So just choose what works for your boat and the fishing conditions and also the way that you've got it rigged. So one of the other things that makes a really big difference is just the position in the spread for these. And it varies between sizes, but you know, we've found that the larger 280 size, uh, even in really rough conditions, it can be fantastic trolled even on the short corner. Uh, we've had the smaller 140 size, uh, rigged exactly like that, trolled you know, way, way back long on the shotgun. So they're a very, very versatile lure. Um, you would consider generally that you know, if it's calmer conditions, you're gonna you know, be putting them on the riggers. If it's uh, you know, rougher, you know, if you're fishing in really rough weather, um, you can troll them in short. And we have actually found the bigger one goes better you know, in really rough weather. But you know, typically we're using these for tuna and marlin in sort of calm to moderate conditions, type of conditions we actually all wanna go fishing in. So you know, you'll find that they are very versatile, but just move them around and see where you like the look of them. So another great little trick is a little bit of uh, electrical tape on the tail uh, for this big single hook on the tail. This is purely just to fix the hook in the upwards position. Uh, we found that worked really well for a lot of our marlin fishing. If you're fishing tuna, maybe in the downwards position is fine. Um, the cool thing with this is you can fix the hook exactly where you want, but because of the leader going through the body, you get that breakaway system and the lure can dislodge from the hook and you're just left with the hook there in the fish and this thing will slide up the leader like a traditional skirted lure. So it's extremely effective. We've also found, particularly on this 280, that 
fixing the wings in position and stopping them from folding forwards can be quite effective in rougher conditions. So the wings on this are quite a bit bigger and heavier, particularly when you're going you know, higher troll speeds, uh, around eight knots. The wings can actually you know, bounce forwards and cause it to become a little bit less stable. It's not a problem in calm, average conditions, but we've just put a little bit of tape around the wings or you can get a little bit of glue and just uh, fix the wings in position. So if you find that you're having any sort of issue in rough weather and you really want to you know, fish it in those rough conditions, just try and lock the wings in place like that um, and it'll be uh, good to go. So just keep these tips in mind when you're out there fishing. Just have a look at how it looks behind your boat. There's a huge amount of versatility around how you can rig these for various conditions, different species. So, you know, go and have a play, find out what works for you. At the end of the day, it's all about making it look good out the back of your boat. So give it a run, see what it looks like and uh, enjoy. Good luck out there.